When I think of the Grand Vitara, what comes to my mind first is a powerful petrol engine and the kind of dynamics that helped it find favor with enthusiasts. And of course, not to forget its immense popularity in motorsports, especially in rally raids like the Raid de Himalaya and the Desert Storm. But times do change and so has the Grand Vitara because this new one is being launched as a hybrid SUV now. And this is a very strategic product for Maruti Suzuki in India because this is Maruti's first ever mid-size premium SUV. The Grand Vitara is not an all-new nameplate for us, but in its new avatar, the SUV is sure to help Maruti Suzuki elevate its status further as a manufacturer of cars that are not only premium, but technologically advanced as well. And Maruti has also ensured the Grand Vitara looks eye-catching from the very first glance. The Grand Vitara makes for a very striking first impression. It may have been co-developed alongside the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider, but this one looks very different and more importantly, very premium. It has a kind of stance and poise that helps it look very upmarket, irrespective of the angle that you look at it from. The Grand Vitara sports the split headlamp design that's been the norm for a while, but the execution here is very appealing looking, especially thanks to the three element DRLs. The grille uses a gloss black pattern with thick chrome surrounds and overall, along with this brilliant looking shade of blue, the Grand Vitara's face looks very premium. The boxy silhouette from the sides confirms the Grand Vitara's SUV status along with the squared wheel arches while the 17-inch wheels use a familiar looking design. But while the design does look proportionate from all angles, a taller stance would have enhanced the Grand Vitara's appeal as a mid-size premium SUV further. The rear end is one of my personal favorites though and that's thanks to the design of the tail lamps and this LED strip that runs from end to end because it really heightens the Grand Vitara's premium quotient. It is not just the lights at work though, but also the intricate design of the LEDs and the translucent plastic cover the lights sit in that do the trick. The Grand Vitara name in the center of the boot lid also adds to the appeal of the rear end. And overall, the rear is thus very good looking, but I would have liked a different finish for the four skid plate at the bottom to make it look more rugged. The interiors of the Grand Vitara are the most premium that we've seen on a Maruti yet, thanks to the dual tone theme inside, the soft touch materials, and of course, the overall ambience of the cabin. The color of the leather trim on the dashboard and door panels and even the seats, along with the quilted pattern on the top half of the seat covers, together add to the cabin's premium feel. What I also like here is that the Grand Vitara's cabin looks compact, but is quite spacious, be it at the front or at the rear. The driver and co-passenger have enough space to move around while rear occupants get ample knee room and leg room thanks to the Grand Vitara's 2600mm wheelbase. The panoramic sunroof adds to the Grand Vitara's sense of airiness as it only gets a thin fabric cover under the glass panel that lets in a lot of light, besides which the opening for the sunroof is the largest in class as the rear glass panel slides backwards to unlike any other SUV. But there is a catch here. I really like this panoramic sunroof, but all you get here is this soft fabric which is going to let a lot of heat pass through in the summers, which means your air conditioning system is going to be working over time to ensure that the cabin is cooled properly. In keeping with this positioning as a mid-size premium SUV, the Grand Vitara is equipped with a really long list of features, but two of my favorites have to be the ventilated front seats and the head-up display. The ventilated seats will be a boon in Indian summers and a feature a lot of buyers will want. The 9-inch standalone infotainment screen is your gateway to a lot of features too, like the tire pressure monitoring system, energy flow display for the mild hybrid and strong hybrid systems both, and even the 360 degree view function that is sure to be appreciated by a lot of buyers. And while the strong hybrid version uses a fully digital instrument cluster, the mild hybrid uses conventional clocks. The Grand Vitara is also high on connected tech and gets a long list of functionalities like remote engine start-stop, air conditioning on-off, geofencing and a lot more, all via the Suzuki Connect app. We are driving both versions of the Grand Vitara, the mild hybrid and the strong hybrid as well. But let's start with the mild hybrid because that's a part that we are familiar with as this is the same 1.5 litre, 4 cylinder, naturally aspirated petrol engine that we have seen in the Brezza and the outputs are the same as well at 103 PS and 136 Nm. Well, the transmission options are the same as well, which is a 5-speed manual and a 6-speed torque converter automatic with paddle shifters. The 1.5-litre engine offers a sprightly feel with its linear power delivery 
and acceleration is brisk. That said, we only managed to drive the automatic version and while gear shifts offered by the torque converter gearbox are smooth, gear shifts and responses both could have been quicker. The gearbox will impress buyers looking for hassle-free driving in traffic though and overall performance is good but at times I did feel the need for some more grunt. The strong hybrid powertrain is the bigger talking point though because this is Maruti's first ever full hybrid car in India. It uses the same 1.5 liter 3 cylinder Atkinson cycle petrol engine as the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider and power is sent to the wheels via an eCVT. But well, the biggest talking point of this car has to be its claimed fuel efficiency number of 27.97 kmpl which is the highest in the country. And Maruti Suzuki claims that this car can effectively do 1200 kilometers on a single tank of petrol. The three-cylinder engine alone produces 92 PS while the electric motor produces 80 PS and the combined output sent to the wheels is 115 PS while the peak torque output is 122 Newton meters. Power is sent to the wheels via an eCVT which means you do not have manual control over the gearbox. The strong hybrid powertrain of course focuses on being a highly efficient one which means this one is not really going to please enthusiasts looking for driving pleasure but yes, it will certainly appeal to those looking for hatchback-like fuel efficiency numbers from a premium SUV and I expect the strong hybrid to be around 40% more efficient than regular petrol engines. You also get a dedicated EV mode that will have you drive around in complete silence but only when the hybrid system's battery pack has sufficient charge. Like any other strong hybrid, the engine does not come on when you press the start button and you take off from standstill in pure EV mode and the engine only comes on when the hybrid system's battery pack needs to be recharged or when there's demand for strong acceleration like when overtaking. Effectively, the Grand Vitara feels like an EV every time you take off from standstill but press hard on the throttle and the engine comes on too, offering stronger acceleration. Also, it is worth noting that the petrol engine's primary job here is to recharge the battery pack for the hybrid system and not power the wheels directly and it only does so when demanded by the driver. And all this flow of energy can be viewed directly on the instrument cluster display itself. One of the biggest highlights of the Grand Vitara though have to be its off-road abilities. It is the first ever Maruti Suzuki to use All Grip, Suzuki's renowned all-wheel drive system, though all-wheel drive is on offer on the mild hybrid only. Not many in the country would associate Maruti Suzuki's products to be off-road capable, but the Grand Vitara is quite capable of tarmac, something we got to experience on a purpose-built track. The Grand Vitara's ground clearance, approach and departure angles all allowed it to take on the obstacles we put it through with utmost ease. And these included a deep pit, articulation pits, a steep incline where we experienced hill hold and hill descent functions and even a slush pit. It is not a hardcore off-roader, but the Grand Vitara is certainly very impressive even in very tricky conditions. We've always liked Maruti Suzuki's cars for their impressive road manners and the Grand Vitara continues the trend, feeling confident and also offering good feel and feedback via the steering. The mild hybrid version is particularly more rewarding if you like driving and I also like the SUV's overall balance between ride and handling. So like most Marutis, the ride quality is impressive too as the Grand Vitara soaked up most undulations well and will thus also impress buyers looking for a family SUV. To sum it up, this is the most impressive offering from Maruti Suzuki yet and the car maker has certainly come very well prepared to enter the mid-size premium SUV segment because that is a segment with some seriously big names like the Hyundai Creta, the Kia Seltos, Volkswagen Tiguan, Skoda Kushak and of course the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider that this one has been co-developed alongside with. Now I'm expecting the Grand Vitara to undercut the High Rider slightly on the pricing front besides which Maruti Suzuki has the biggest sales and service network in the country. So apart from it being a very impressive offering, these are the factors that should certainly help the Grand Vitara become Maruti Suzuki's next big blockbuster.